I've been working on a pretty cool project to redesign a pitch and modulation wheel for a synthesizer. I can't show you what the new parts look like, but the process is pretty cool. So I thought I'd show you and share with you the process that I go through to redesign a product like this. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. Let's take care of business first. My sponsor, PCB Way, has a program going on right now where if you sign up, you get a $5 sign up bonus. And if you share that project with the rest of the world, you'll get a 10% commission every time somebody else uses that project that you created. Click the link in the description below for more information. Thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So these modules are pretty simple. They basically have an encoder inside of them and the wheels just kind of press fit in place. They're very simple wheels. They're just over molded plastic injection molded parts that come out pretty easy. This one has a spring in it and then you can see the simple encoders here just mounted inside of this plastic housing that then gets dropped into the synthesizer itself and then just plugged in here. So we're not going to redesign this thing. We're just worried about these wheels and both of them are exactly the same. And so I'm going to take you through that process of how we redesign this part. built the base wheel based on the sketch and I'll show you how I've put this thing together really quick so the first thing I built is the the base wheel and what it kind of looks like with the notch out here and then the sort of raised half spheres in here. There's kind of a trim piece that trims out the wheel and gives it this kind of little bit of a bevel, but it's a bit more than a bevel, right? They're curved a little bit, so it's not a straight up bevel, so it's a little more human. So from there, we extrude out the base piece, and then we add in all the little ridges right here. Now we're gonna swing this trim in here and turn the sketches off. So we'll add in just the little, the little bit of a cut to give it a little bit of that technical kind of look. Now I'll remove the piece at the bottom and then start adding in the center pieces for the spring. So I'm pretty happy with where we're at now on this. I want to soften up some of this stuff in through here just to make it a little bit more human. So we're going to go through and add fillets. Select all my fillets.
Infusion's really nice. It lets you sort of select right through the object, which I really like, and it makes things a little bit easier for selecting. So you don't always have to flip everything over. So that's nice. Now it kind of calculates that all out, softens that up. To prep this part for printing, I'm gonna rename the part. That's just good practice. We're gonna right click. We're gonna make an STL file. You can see here three, uh, Fusion 360 shows you all the triangulations and it should automatically launch Cura. No, Cura crashes, something with permissions. Can't figure out how to fix it. Autodesk, maybe you could take care of that. That'd be awesome. Relaunch uh, Cura. We're gonna reorient the part on the print bed laying flat on its back. We're gonna print with a 0.4 nozzle size in PLA. All it needs is a simple skirt uh, around the perimeter and the part is ready to go on to the next step. Now that we got that part saved, let's go print. So I've printed out two of them. This is just an extra one. Let's see how this guy fits in here. Simply pop it on to the encoder shaft. It's a simple press fit. Goes right on there. Nice. Nice. So I really like this protrusion that sticks up. Everybody's going to have a different preference, you know, particularly musicians. I like the tactile feel, the difference of this protrusion versus these lower things right here to sort of tell me where I was on the encoder wheel. Uh, but the proof would be in the pudding. You would want to have a musician test it out depending upon the device that you were designing it for. This is just one option uh, that you could go for. And if you needed to have your spring that was active to go into here. I did a small miscalculation actually. You are gonna need to widen this up. And that's a simple CAD adjustment that would be made in, in your CAD application and we would wanna remove that material and that would be a very simple adjustment. Now, 
depending upon how you were going to manufacture these, if you were going to make them in uh, as a plastic injection molded part, you could resin cast something like this uh, for a more accurate final look and feel, something that I have a whole bunch of videos on resin casting these. Uh, then you could cast them in different colors as well. Uh, you could even uh, soft touch paint them. You could do that with these parts too. If you were going to machine these out of a different material uh, for production, let's say you weren't going to injection mold these, you were going to machine them out of plastic or Delrin or aluminum or steel or brass or gold or copper or whatever, you would send this uh, file out to a machinist and then they would machine some and then you could get them back and pop them on and test them, test the look and feel of that and go from there. All right, and so this is the basic process that I go through uh, sketching 2D then uh, building it in CAD and then making a prototype and that's how you go through the process. I always like to go back and forth between 2D and 3D making adjustments and uh, making some sort of a mock-up and a prototype just like this so you can test out the look and feel and have the best possible design outcome to get the best user experience uh, and look and feel for your product. Thanks for watching. If you work on a creative design team and you're looking for some design assistance with a new product or a redesign, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to get you and your team a quote. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.